Today on Poke the Bear, we're discussing two of the three heavyweight titans in today's boxing landscape. Of course, I mean none other than Tyson Fury and Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder, who have a showdown on July 24th and meet in the ring at Allegiant Stadium, the new home of the NFL's Las Vegas Raiders. Now, I'll introduce them to you. If by chance you live under a rock or in the depths of the sea, or just pay no attention to sports at all. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to honor a very important person. Former super welterweight champion, Brooklyn Keith Mullings. Real boxing historians remember him as the US Army veteran and underdog who completely shocked the boxing world when he defeated then champion and now legend, terrible Terry Norris by technical knockout. But to me, he was Uncle Keith, a father figure for several years of my life, the man who taught me boxing and began my lifelong obsession. We love you and we miss you. This is the pre-fight analysis. This is Poke the Bear. Fury's rise and Deontay's decision. Tyson Fury is boxing's current WBC heavyweight champion. He's never lost a fight and standing at six foot nine, he's taller than most every major heavyweight. Known for being a slick boxer and sporting, let's be honest, the ultimate dad bod. The self-proclaimed Gypsy King has a unique ability to get underneath his opponent's skin before, during, and after the bell. His silly antics make him must-see TV, especially at his home in the UK. Inside of the ring, Fury has a very slick and unique defense for a man of his size frustrating opponents who rarely have the opportunity to hit him clean. On his record are two of the biggest names in boxing's heavyweight division over the last 20 years, that being Vladimir Klitschko and Deontay Wilder. In 2015, Fury beat Klitschko and became the holder of most of the belts in the heavyweight division at the time. Although, he would soon squander his fortune and fame on reckless living that would leave him stripped of his belts and almost his life. In an admirable comeback story, Fury had to fight his way back through depression, obesity and obscurity as the boxing world had moved on without him. Fighters like Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder had become the new stars of the division. During his comeback to the sport, Fury signed a contract with American promoter Top Rank and ESPN, which put him back into the heavyweight conversation, and for the first time in front of an American audience. But after fighting opponents that not even the most avid of boxing fans could recognize, Fury's name would remain in the shadow realm. He wouldn't be taken seriously until December of 2018, when he finally decided to step up and face Deontay Wilder when no one else would. The fight was on. Wilder vs Fury was one for the ages. Packed with two knockdowns from Deontay Wilder and an impressive boxing display from Tyson Fury, we were all excited for a rematch after the first fight ended in a controversial draw. Come February 22nd, 2020. In a complete reversal of the previous fight, Fury hit the gas from the very first bell, while Wilder looked a bit sluggish and out of sorts. Tyson Fury would then use feints and forward pressure to continue to press the issue. This is not what we were expecting. And in the seventh round, Mark Breland throws in the towel. Tyson Fury defeats Deontay Wilder by TKO. Fury has been on the high since then. Enjoying the celebrity that comes with being a top draw in the sport and pursuing a unification fight with Anthony Joshua. Wilder, on the other hand, had some work to do. From a faulty outfit during his ring walk, to Tyson Fury's alleged glove tampering, to questions of his trainer's loyalty, Deontay Wilder was left with some choices to make and some soul searching to do. Following his first professional loss, Wilder gave multiple reasons as to why he believes February 22nd went the way it did. Say what you will about the Bronze Bomber, but I think we can all agree he's a man of conviction. 
And convicted as he was, Deontay began to hunt Fury down for the possibility of a third fight. Whether the allegations against Fury were true or not, boxing champions are almost always entitled to a rematch if they ever lose their title. And listed in their contract was such a clause. Fury, however, wanted no parts of a third fight with Deontay Wilder as he began to pursue a mega fight with the third side of this heavyweight love triangle, Anthony Joshua. The two began a 14-week negotiation for the possibility of a fight in Saudi Arabia, a curious location for two UK megastars. A media storm would soon ensue around the possibility of this fight, but the former champion Wilder wouldn't be put on the shelf so quickly. Working behind closed doors with an expert team of lawyers and veteran managers Shelley Finkel and Al Heyman, Wilder's team took a legal route in their pursuit of a trilogy fight with Tyson Fury. While Bob Arum and Eddie Hearn were telling the world about a Fury vs. AJ fight, an arbitration was beginning behind closed doors between Deontay Wilder's team, Tyson Fury's legal team, and a judge. To the dismay of many UK fans, Wilder's team won the arbitration and any hopes for Fury vs. AJ were off, at least for now. The judge ruled in favor of the clause in Wilder's contract, and Fury Wilder 3 was announced for July 24th in Las Vegas. Stay tuned to Poke the Bear as we give you more pre-fight analysis in this fight and more to come. Nobody stole it, Lord, I pray somebody's honest Then the office called me back, told me a custodian had saw it Turned it in and come and get it if I want it Awesome, I see my ten dollars cash, awesome There's that ten for that gas, awesome I still took a loss, but I didn't, but I did Guess it is what it is, but it isn't, ah And that's just how the story goes See, life is like a box of Oreos And that's how the cookie crumbles At least you get the cream, little things on the road To a much bigger dream, what up? Morning, feeling nauseous, could've sworn she was nauseous The day before this, as I recall it, and fast forward I had a dream, I had a daughter, but the sonogram Say I got a boy, I can't call it Great time for my job to lay me off And in fact, I got a child on the way, that ain't important Of course I get blessed with a car back rolling First week I get a ticket, traffic court Hey y'all, hey y'all The judge gave me a pass, awesome By the way, my son name is Chaz Hoffler Please don't call him Junior, it's different He's a second, so technically he is, but he isn't, uh that's how the will of fortune rolls I know my future, I don't need your horoscope But if the fortune cookie crumbles It's paper in between little things That remind me of a much bigger dream What up? Dream. Dream. Dream.